Good morning everyone, it's Carol here at OCAS Journals and I hope you're really enjoying the start of 2023. I was sat yesterday thinking about all the craft projects, journals, um, altered guest checks, whatever that I'd made last year and also the challenges that I participated in and I was just thinking what an absolute blast of a year it was. I had so much fun and there was a huge amount of inspiration flying around within our crafting community. It was absolutely awesome and I'm fired up and excited about 2023 because I've got a list of crafting projects that I have in mind to do. I have one or two that I need to finish off but I'm still looking forward to doing that and actually completing them and also the challenges. There's always challenges or projects that people come up with throughout the year. There's things like the 100 day project ICAD. Um, Rachel and Sarah are doing more of their journals of stitchery and I know Amy Crafty Cat is doing another slightly different 50 stack challenge. It's 50 stack challenge number number two. Um, so we've got so much to look forward to and I'm really really excited about that. But we still have the current 50 stack challenge or I still have the current 50 stack challenge to finish off and I've lifted out guest checks 43 and 44 because these are the two that we've got prompts for this week. Um, the prompt for number 43, I'm just going to pop this one to one side because I don't need it. The prompt for number 43 is stamp as in a postage stamp. So I lifted out my little tub here of vintage foreign stamps and as you can see I've got some lovely little bundles of them that I can't bear to open up. Um, so I lifted these out and I decided that I was going to use all these stamps which if I hold that one up to the camera you can see it's got a medieval knight on horseback. Now all these stamps are exactly the, the same, they're all Portuguese but they're all different colours and um, obviously different price denominations. So I thought I would use those. Now, initially I thought I might do something like some envelope art or mail art, um, but then this idea popped into my head of making something, <laughs> now you'll think I'm crazy here, something akin to a cargo net with these using stitching on my sewing machine. I have no idea what it's going to look like. I have no idea whether or not it's going to work. If I was doing this with fabric, I could use as my substrate to work on, I could use something like water soluble material, but I don't have any of that that would work for this. But what I'm thinking is that I can use this tissue paper and pull it away afterwards. So what I've done is I've cut a piece or torn a piece that's roughly well, pretty good actually, um, roughly the size of my guest check. And what I'm going to do is just randomly put these gorgeous, gorgeous stamps on here and then stitch them on my sewing machine. Now, I have no idea whether this is going to work or not, um, and I have to <laughs> equally have no idea what I'm going to do with it once I've created my cargo net type thingy bob that is coming to mind but I just wanted to give this a try so I've lifted out a colour palette in these that I think will roughly go together quite quite nicely um, I don't know whether to put them close together or put them wide apart so I'm just going to kind of randomly put them on here when I've done that I will come back to you So these are my stamps just fairly randomly placed on here. I've got a few that I will be cutting portions away. I've tried to leave some gaps and I've tried to do um, different orientations. So some are obviously the correct way round and horizontal um, and others are vertical. Um, if they're vertical, I've tried to keep them going all in the same direction. So all pointing out to the right hand side. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tiny blob of glue behind each of my stamps now that I know where I want them placed. Um, the reason for this is it will hold it in place as I'm stitching um, and the other thing is 
the tissue paper is helping me see what the stamp placement will be like on the um, actual guest check when I've randomly <laughs> stitched it all. So let's make sure I've got that one in the right orientation. And I want it like that. And I think I mentioned before, I'm quite happy about the gaps because uh, I'm going to be tearing away the tissue paper So this is how my piece looks now that I've glued all the uh, the stamps down. And in honesty, I got carried away because I didn't intend it to have this depth of coverage on the tissue paper. I intended to use just half a dozen stamps and have it fairly open weave so that you could see whatever covering I was going to put on the guest check through it. But when I got going, I actually quite liked the, the random look of it. So I just went with it. Now that's what it looks like. Um, as you can see, I've chopped some of the stamps where it's gone over the edge and those portions um, um, I've actually glued on in various spots. So that's what it looks like when it's on the guest check. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch all over here. And then I'm going to pull away the tissue paper so that um, all you see between the stamps is the stitching from my sewing machine. So I'll be back when I've done the stitching. This is how my piece looks now that I've stitched all over it. Um, I think I might have seriously bombed out on this one because I'm not particularly loving it. Um, I was thinking about doing crisscrosses on here, um, sorry, a grid pattern on here, but I've just gone over it a couple of times with some messy stitching. And now what I'm going to try and do is just tear away the tissue paper to leave the stamps it could be an abject disaster this one but at least it was an idea that I had in my head that I wanted to run with and at least I've given it a try if nothing else so what I'm going to do now is just carefully peel away all this tissue paper that I've got as my um, background and where it's going to be difficult, I will probably dab it with a little bit of water. So this is going to take some doing, I think. So please bear with me and I will be back in a little while. So this is how my piece is looking now that I've um, pulled all the tissue paper off the back and I'm not liking it any better, I have to say. Um, I thought that I would actually leave it without too much going on in the background so that the stamps will stand out. But what I think might be nice is to put a bit of this um, vintage ledger paper. This is German ledger paper that I've got behind it, just so that where you have the odd gap, if I put this on here, I can pick up some of the writing behind it. And I thought that might be quite nice. Also, it softens down this, this because this is stark white. So I'm just going to rip myself a portion of this. Just so that I've got some rough edges. So I'm thinking something like this, just measure that. As you can tell, I'm just roughly eyeballing this and folding. There we go. So I'm thinking something like that and then that just on top like that. Um, I think I will glue this down. Um, so anyway, let me just do this bit. Okay, so far so good. I'm liking that. <laughs> I'm not so sure about this. And this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think, again, to glue down. But give it a go. I 
Okay, so that's my piece glued down. I'm not sure that it offers anything <laughs> in terms of um, a background. Um, now I've got to think what to do with it. As you can see, I've left my edges, um, not my edges, my threads dangling down. Um, okay, I'm wondering whether I ought to, I could just leave it as it is, but I don't really have a focal point. It's just a background, isn't it? So I'm wondering whether I can um, put maybe one big stamp in the middle um, and have that as my focal point and just try and blend this into the background. Um, I'm also wondering whether or not I can put an envelope on there, vintage envelope or something. Let me go away and see what I can find in my stash and um, see what I can come up with by way of an idea for what I can do on here. Okay, so I've lifted out a few bits here. I've got this piece of the same ledger paper that I've used for underneath here and I tried embossing it a couple of um, weeks back and whilst I love the texture it makes it incredibly fragile so I've just teased off a little portion of this and I'm going to use that down the side. I've got a little bit of brown paper which is the leftover piece from a vintage receipt um, dated 1st of the 3rd, 1946. Now I'm not gonna use that side of it. Well, I don't think I am. Let's have a look. I wasn't planning to, but let's have a look. No, I prefer it the other way around. So I'm going to use it like that on my piece. Um, and I've got a piece of, oh, it's just an old piece of paper that I've obviously put some washi round at some time. Um, it's a French document, very, very um, fragile, but I think I can use that. Um, I've got a tiny little label here. I've got one of the Tim Holtz paper dolls. I've got a, um, a number piece here that I thought I could use. And again, another one of the Tim Holtz ephemera pieces. And I thought I might use that um, to go behind that. So what I was thinking was having this down here like so if I I'm going to still leave my threads loose but I might trim those off so I was thinking that piece down there like that and that piece on the top and tie in with the background and the text then perhaps have this tucked in here I'm not quite sure whether to tuck it in behind like that so that my um, paper comes onto this piece. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down to where my finger is on this back portion here. So I'm going to put that one down on here, like that. And similarly with this piece, Okay, this bit is going to go on the bottom. Whoops, wrong way around. Something like that, I'm thinking. So I need to, I want to have a little bit of a border with that there. So I'm going to rip my paper on here across there and make sure this bit wasn't glued because this is where my finger was. So I'm just going to put some glue now to make it stick down. Like that. So this I'm thinking I'll have on here like that. And then I thought I would bring this down onto it so that it looks like a continuation of this. And then I thought I could have my little guy or guys on here. Um, I've got a little hole here, so I've picked up a brad and I thought that I could actually glue that in place at an angle and then put the brad on there. So I'm going to do that before I actually try adhering that down as a pocket. 
And again, this is quite fragile, so this will help reinforce it. I'm just going to put that brad in there like that. I've got a scrap of paper that is left over from that, and I'm just going to glue that. I haven't put that wing of that brad very straight. I'm just going to glue it over the wings of my brad and I think I might double that over actually so let me do that. So I'm just going to pop a little bit on there like that and break it off and then just put another little bit of glue on as well because again this is quite thin and fragile paper so I've got a few little <laughs> makeshift layers there. I'm just going to give that a little press down. So there we go. So I'm quite liking how that is. So I need to glue down here and glue down here. And glue across the bottom. Like that. Bring in my paper. So I'm going to have that going underneath this, like that. And I'm just going to, I'm liking that serrated edge along the bottom there, so I think I might rip it across the top here instead. I was going to rip it along the bottom, but I'm going to take it off the top because I think it'll look nicer. So I'm going to slide that piece in there like that and then I thought I would have this piece on the top it's lifting at the side here so I'm going to add some more glue just to hold it in place That. and then this is where I thought I would just bring in my little boys like that so his arm is going over the top of this writing here so it almost looks like he's leaning on it and this is where I thought I might use this little tiny label we have it kind of popping out if I bring them over a little bit like that and have the label maybe popping out the side a little bit. It's looking a bit random to me now that I'm doing it. So let me have a think about that. Maybe I can use a portion of that to give it some interest. And then that little piece. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Take a pen and do a scribble on that as if it's a signature. And then I've got my little card to pop in the back pocket there. I'm probably going to ink this. So there we go, everybody. This is guest check number, whoops, number 43 stamp and it's turned out not at all like I expected it to or how I envisaged it uh, would do when I set off and I've just realized that now that that too is hidden behind my little Tim Holtz figure here it actually has got a 43 there and that was a purely random accident um, because obviously we're on guest check number 43 so yeah completely and utterly different from how I envisaged this one was going to look uh, when I set set out doing this one this morning. Um, it's not going to be one of my favourites, I can tell you that now, but um, I'm glad I tried it. It's one of those things I find if I have an idea in my head, I'm, I'm not happy until I go away and give it a try. So thanks so much for watching everybody and until the next video, take care, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye now.